Abstract classes are defined so that other classes can inherit from them. An abstract class cannot be directly instantiated, but its descendants, its subclasses, may have direct instances. In UML, you show that a class is an abstract class by italicizing the class name. So as you can see here, so just to make that clear, we'll call this abstract class. An abstract class usually has one or more abstract operations. An abstract operation does not have any implementation. Rather, each subclass that inherits the operation implements it in its own way. We'll see an example in a moment, but first let's see how to show that in our classifier box. So here we have a couple of operations. Let's make operation number two an abstract operation. Note that an abstract class can have both real operations and abstract operations. That's why the italicization is important, because it indicates which operations in an abstract class are abstract operations. So the way to think about abstract classes is that an abstract class provides an operation signature, but no implementation. In this way, an abstract class can provide common behavior across a set of subclasses by providing the operation signature whose specific implementation is left to those subclasses. To show the relationship between an abstract class and its subclass, you do this. We'll call this class 2 here subclass. And note that because it's a standard class, its class name is not italicized. And subclass also has couple of operations that it inherits from the abstract class. And again, both of these operations, 1 and 2, are not italicized because both of them in the subclass are operations that can be implemented. And to show that this subclass inherits from this abstract class, we use a generalization arrow. Pointing from the child class, the subclass, back to the parent class, the abstract class. So as you can see in the abstract class, we can clearly see that it is an abstract class and that this operation is an abstract operation. And we can see that that operation, once it's inherited by the subclass, can be implemented. And the subclass can be instantiated. It can create instances of the class. So here's the example that I mentioned earlier. Here we have an abstract class called speaking with an abstract operation called speak. There are three standard classes that are subclasses of this abstract class, English speaker, French speaker, and Russian speaker. Each of these subclasses inherits the speak operation, but each subclass will implement that speak operation in its own way. So instances of the English speaker class will speak in one way, instances of the French speaker class will speak in another way, and instances of the Russian speaker class will speak in yet a third way. So as you can see, this abstract class allows this common behavior, speak, to be implemented across these subclasses, but each subclass can implement that operation in its own way. And finally, Note that not all parent classes have to be abstract classes. A standard class can certainly be a parent class. For example, this English speaker class here could be a parent class to subclasses called American, Brit, Australian, Canadian, and so on. So both standard classes and abstract classes are capable of being parent classes whose features can be inherited by subclasses.